We're glad to know you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and uh, we're we're going to look at the headlines right now. We're being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner uh, here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's always a pleasure a having night. you here. Okay, um, let's begin. Let's begin uh, this uh, today's. Um, uh, paper review with um, what we find on uh, Business NG. And the, the headline here, the biggest headline here is, more hardship as prices of rice, beans, gari, orders spike by 50%. Um, would like to just, first of all, hear your comments on that. Well, the truth of the matter is, uh, <clears throat> it's not just the prices of food items that are going up. Basically, everything that we want to purchase using the Naira has uh, quadrupled, skyrocketed in the world as well. But with regard to the price of food stock that are going up, one would have thought that with the directive of Mr. President, that uh, uh, glaze would be released from the silo from the food storage and all that, that that would have some dampening effect or would have some effect on crashing the prices of. Uh, of a food stock in the market. And uh, some governments have also taken steps to regulate <coughs> the prices of food items in the market. And then the movement or transaction of these food items in their respective domain. So all these things were expected to bring that up to crash uh, the prices of food stock. But if it is not coming, and that tells us that uh, both the director of the Mr. President, that of the governor and the chairman, is not having any means to impact on the prices of the food stock. And uh, it shouldn't be surprised to it shouldn't be a surprise to us in the sense that if you are lying to me that it is only what you have in the market that you can really conduct transactions of in terms of finance selling. The food items are just not there because the farmers can find it very difficult to go to the market because of insecurity. You and I will also know that certain food items like beans and the rice and what have you come from countries like the Nigeria Republic and uh, some of these other West African countries. With the crisis in the Air Force uh, region, and then with the border uh, short between Nigeria and then, for example, the Nigeria Republic and what have you, you know, all these things have had very adverse effects on uh, the food uh, items. So the federal government is to raise the money if they could muster the necessary resources. They have to do the kind of cash importation of some of these food items, especially rice, especially beans, especially maybe canned um, the tomato puris and water from some of these countries, at least to bring down the cost of the food uh, the prices, the grains and water, so that the ordinary people are becoming restless who have started demonstrations in places like uh, the Niger State and some of these other places. Won't, uh, their fears in regard to food starvation can be immediately assuaged. We are in a very, very serious uh, uh, problem. We all need to put our houses in order. We need to put all our safety caps. We also need to be our brother keeper in this very, very difficult time with regard to food uh, insecurity. Oh, well, I, I don't know. Um, the directive of the, the president was that the silos should be opened and these grains and everything that we need uh, should be uh, put into the market to slash the prices. But we know what happened during the palliatives. We know what has happened uh, for about the, uh, the was it gift, they call it, the 25,000 Naira uh, cash award that was supposed to be given to workers, which the NLC is still protesting today. We know what um, they were promised that was going to be paid to them, the 35,000 Naira that was going to be paid to them for six months. We know that it was paid for one month, according to the NLC, and that's part of the reason they are saying they are going to protest in less than 10 days now. So I, I don't know how this directive will work. If, at, if the president has given the directive and if it's going to be carried out at all, and if it is going to be carried out, carried out will it be carried out like the palliatives that will, was... I always ask these questions. This question, the government doesn't have a market. How will they put this in the market to slash the prices? Will they have a particular store where people can go and buy <clears throat> in this kind of... Uh, because as of two days ago, 
The price of a bag of rice in Ikorodu, for instance, was between 72 and 76,000 naira per bag. I don't know how that, because subsidy gone brought untold hardship, it brought the cost of fuel, it, it skyrocketed the, the cost of fuel, just that statement. Okay, release of grain should have also uh, made people to, uh, to crash the price of, uh, of whatever we are crying that is too high right now, but it's still going higher and higher. Do you think it will even, it will even succeed at all? Well, um, it's not impossible. The price can control and grow. <laughs> All we need to do is um, fight this food scarcity from different uh, uh, directives, I mean, from different uh, uh, directions. Releasing the food silos, or the food in the silos, or in the past, is one good step that Mr. President has taken. But the truth of the matter is that wouldn't be enough, because it's just like a drop in the ocean, where a country of not less than about 200 million people, and... Um, how much are these grains that are in the capacity chain itself? Taking cognizance of, uh, of this capacity, the huge, huge uh, differential that we have on the ground with regards to availability and non availability. So, like I said, I would um, expect that uh, the government should embark on uh, immediate uh, importation of some of these uh, strategic uh, grains and the uh, food items so as to bring down um, the price. You are also asking. How will the federal government be able to approach the market and then the state government mm. be able to approach the market when they really don't have uh, uh, maybe some dealers or retailers directly under them? Well, most times, uh, what the government have only done is to use some of the established uh, wholesalers in the different uh, uh, places and also some of the established uh, 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 retailers in some of these places. And of course, too, the, both the local government, the state government, the federal government, they know who are some of the leaders. They know some of these market owners. Uh, for example, the market leader will be able to sell or be able to identify their members who can help both the state government, the federal government, and the, the local government to sell or to distribute some of these food items in such a manner that uh, it is not going to be ordered, in such a manner that it is going to get to the right uh, the places. And if we also appeal to the state, the patriotic instinct of the Nigerian uh, the market women and men, not to see this as a business as usual, not to see this as an opportunity to make profit, but to really uh, become their brother's keeper in terms of making some of these food items for, I mean, uh, available to, 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 to the ordinary Nigerian people. I think we might be able to get uh, uh, some solutions uh, uh, to this. Uh, but like we said, yeah, to well, fight this food scarcity and guarantee the food security. What we need to do is to ensure that the farmers are able to go back to the farm and till the soil. And the only way the farmer will be able to go back to the farm and till the soil is for us to be able to provide some clarity in the different rural areas. Anything outside that, they might just going to be in the act. In the sense that the food silo that you are releasing from the strategic reserves and all that are not limitless. Sooner than later, they can also get exhausted. And again, too, if you say you are going to be importing some of these items and all that, where is the money to keep importing? And even if you have the money, does that make sense that you begin to import everything that you consume in this country? The answer is no. So it is that we as a people must go back to the farm, and the only way we can go back to the farm is to ensure that there is security in the real area. And also we make available to the farmers the set of seedlings and then the agricultural extensive services that we used to give them in the, in, in the past to ensure that um, they till the soil uh, profitably, they get a better yield from whatever uh, seedlings that they plant, and that the farming doesn't become more, you know, the kind of drudgery, the hard labor that it has always been, that making sure that farming equipment, caterpillars, and all manner of equipment are made available to the farmers in the rural area to be able to apply their trade mm. without too much of exertion of energy. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well first of all, I, I just, I'm just taking 
um, the experience with the lake rice, uh, which the government uh, had a very good intention to make sure that uh, rice is affordable to at least the Lagosians and the people of Kebi State, which had a ripple effect or should have had a ripple effect. Uh, and I know how uh, some people, government officials, were hoarding this and giving to their cronies or selling uh, this rice at the price that it wasn't supposed to be sold. But my concern is I think it's very unfair that any time we're talking about crashing prices, we talk about food. And that is because we just think that the farmers, um, you know, after all, you go to the farm and you, you, you cultivate these things and you carry, take it back. We're not talking about noodles, which is also part of food. We are not talking about bread. We are not talking about any other thing that is manufactured. You know, we are talking about the things that are being planted by our farmers. And I think it's not being fair, that we are not being fair. Because these farmers also buy uh, what they use. Like you've suggested, there should cool. be tractors and other things for the farmers, which are not available. So if you go to Nature News, for instance, now, there are two stories there. Uh, the other, first one is saying, uh, a quiet bomb government to enact law on food prices, food prices. And when they're talking food prices, they're talking gari, they're talking yams, they're talking rice, things that our local farmers produce because they think that these people don't need forex. So I don't know why, why, what they're saying. And we also have a story, federal government plans national commodity board to tackle food inflation. The, the, the target is food. And when we talk food, we talk local farmers. We're not talking about anything else that is imported or something like I mentioned. Uh, the, nobody's talking about spaghetti. Nobody's talking about noodles. Nobody's talking about bread. Nobody's talking about any other thing. We're talking about yams, cassava, gari. We're talking about beans. We're talking about millet and all those things. I think it's not big. Then we're not being fair to the farmers. That's my thought. I don't know what you think. Well, all the things that you have mentioned are quite um, uh, correct. I give you an example. You mentioned the bread. Uh, which house will uh, you go to now that you will not find bread on the food uh, menu, on the food uh, table? Things like bread and rice have become very staple food items in Nigeria today. And you and I do know that there are many things. The quantum of rice that we consume in this country, we are not producing even about 10% of it. Most of them are imported from Thailand and some of these other countries. And of course, the wheat that we used to make bread. I'm not too sure we even produce any of that uh, in this country and uh, what have Most of these items are, are imported. So we really need to look at some of these things. There have been efforts in the past to ensure that we plant a wheat in the country. But the dependence on the position of wheat, which is to make it better, becomes a, a thing of the past. Also look at sugar. That is something that we consume on a daily basis and a very, very huge uh, quantity. Also remember that those who produce very, very drink and all that, also produce, and also using uh, sugar. Every effort that has been made in the past to ensure that this country becomes uh, fully uh, self-sufficient in sugar production have all failed uh, a very woefully. Not because we don't have the land to do it, not because the expertise is, uh, and the skills are found from, not because the ordinary Nigerian person doesn't want to consume wheat or bread that is made from Nigerian grown wheat, or sugar that is produced in Nigeria. It's just because the average Nigerian elite prefer to import some of these things, sell them in the market at uh, some cutthroat prices, make huge amount of money, and then repart the money in terms of dollars, and talent, and I know that to some of these other places. Patriotism is, uh, is lacking in some of these areas. This is an area the government both the local government, the state level, and then the federal government, we have to look at. I appeal to the patriotic instincts of the people not to hoard any of these uh, food items, any of these things. And like you also said, like you have also said, we must just find a way to get all our hands back on deck with regard to farming in this country. Anything short of that uh, is going to be a miracle. In fact, a country that is unable to food itself, that it depends on um, food importation cannot be said to be independent. These are part of the issues or part of the reason people uh, ridicule, uh, North Korea, that they are developing atomic energy, long-range ballistic missiles and what have But they are unable to feed their people. They depend on China, they depend on Russia, they depend on some of these other countries to begin to donate food items to them before they are able to feed their people. We can afford to do that. We are a huge country 
of about 200, and 200 million people who is going to be giving us enough food or sufficient food to be able to feed these 200 million people if we don't do it ourselves. But not just the Lakai, other governments in Nigeria should follow the footsteps of the Lagos State Government and then begin to see in what area they can intervene in the field of agricultural production, in the field of planting, processing, of food items, and all that. Like you said, yam is now becoming a rarity. A, a unit of a, or to a tuba of yam now costs as much as 4,000, 5,000, and what Whereas the yam ordinarily used to be like that. People like them that uh, ordinary man can quickly purchase and, uh, and cook and then eat. It's now become uh, a luxury. So we need to go back to the farm and do the needful so that our people can uh, begin to uh, do away with the starvation that is carrying them in the face. And then so that the country can be truly independent in terms of food sufficiency. Yeah, well. Um, I think the federal government, state governments, the local governments, as you have mentioned, should, should do the needful. Um, there are so, so many places uh, that rice is being produced. Even here in Lagos, there are places that rice can be produced. Even if it is small quantity, 10 quantity, bags here, 50 exactly. bags here, and so on. The challenge in Lagos especially is you don't even have the small rice milling uh, facilities that you can, you can mm -hmm. mill that rice. So you produce... Five bags, for instance, you don't find a place to mill the rice. You cannot take it to a mortar mm. for that can that mills tons and tons of rice. You can you can mm. only take it to a very small place. So if government can produce these small milling machines to communities that they know can produce rice, then it would be a very good thing. I have experience of exactly. someone who was producing like 30 bags in Lagos. He had to uh, transport this to somewhere in mm. Ogun State, and even then. There are no more meals now, so he stopped. So if 50 bucks could have been brought into the society, who knows how many other 50s can be brought? So government should look into this. Now, exactly. yeah, we move to the Punch newspaper, where cost of living, federal government, NLC meeting deadlocked. Bakers threaten shutdown. The riders are, strike will go ahead. Federal government negotiation not fruitful, NLC leaders insist. And then federal government warns against unrealistic demands as labor seeks yearly pay rise. Okay, so this is where we are right now. Even uh, labor is talking about uh, the possibility of asking for one million naira because the realities on mm -hmm. ground uh, show that even that one million naira will go nowhere. At the time when they were talking possibly about the about 200,000 naira minimum wage, let's say uh, the exchange rate was 200 naira to a, a dollar, uh, th that, will me that will mean that uh, about $1,000 will give you the amount that they're talking about. Right now, if you talk about $1,000, you'll be talking about 1.5 million or 1.5 something million naira. So, you know, what are we saying? So this is where we are. There's deadlock. Federal government and NLC, NLC are not uh, agreeing. What do you think may be the outcome tomorrow? Well, the, I quite sympathize with the NLC. When you look at the demand of the NLC and the TUC, uh, one might be thinking that um, it is not realistic, it's uh, too exaggerated. Where would they want the federal government, the state government, the local government that are unable to pay 30,000 minimum wage, not be able to pay 1 million naira minimum wage mm. to the worker? But the truth of the matter is that when you look at the one million naira that labor is demanding, if a worker gets one million naira on a monthly basis and all that, and he gets out twelve times in a year and all that, that is just twelve million naira. If you look at the cost of the accommodation, renting houses in a place like Lagos, cost of transportation and what have you, and then they pay children's cookies and all that, you will agree with me that that's one million naira that NLC is asking for, that the two is asking for. This let us not meet the, the, the needs of the average Nigerian uh, uh, worker. But then the question you want to ask is that uh, where would the federal government be able to find one million naira to be able to pay its uh, workers uh, all over the country? Where would the state government be able to find one million naira to be able to pay its workers? Where would the local government that cannot even pay the 30,000 naira minimum wage be able to find one million naira to pay its workers? And even if the government are able to pay their workers, that's a jumbo amount of uh, the salaries and what 
with the private sector. That uh, most Nigerians, that uh, almost uh, 80, 85 percent of Nigerians belong to, be able to pay that one million naira as minimum wage. The answer, in my humble opinion, is a is a, is a not or is near. No, they won't be able to pay it and all that. So how do we find a common ground that will cushion the adversity of the economic uh, uh, situation in the country today and also help the government to be able to help the workers, both who are on salary and those who are in the public sector? My take on it would be for us to really fight inflation. The federal government, the state government, and then the local government must find ways and means to fight the uh, inflation. Part of the measures through which they can fight in place, like we said, is to really bring in import, immediately import of food items, like rice, like yam, like beans, like tomato, like onion, and flood the market with it, on the internet. If the market is flooded with uh, this uh, food item, and they are all over the place and all that, the possibility that it will crash uh, the skyrocketing food prices all over the country is very, very high. And then while we do this on the interim measure, we now begin to see time ways and means to bring to get the farmers back uh, to the respective uh, uh, farms. And the uh, high measures of this in the past, which I think both the state government, the local government, and the federal government are not paying attention to. It is a research institute. In the past, we used to, most of our research institutes, cocoa research, uh, passport research, Right research in Badegi and uh, what happened? They were all very active. They were all producing. They were all having improved seeds in IICA in the battle. They were all doing our seed programs for the farmers, the respective place and other. But when you go to some of these research in Chief of they are very solid seeds. They are commercial. They are no longer functioning. Those ones that are still existing, they are only able to pay salary to a few of the workers that they have retained. They are as most of the specialists have. The flood in the country have gone out of the country and got to different other countries where they are best valued and water. We must inject life back into all the research institutes, especially the agricultural research institutes, who will be able to help our farmers to get uh, better use from their respective uh, farm. And of course, too, we must appeal to the security people. A lot of these things are going to depend on them. Without security in the rural area, Without people being able to move from one part of the country to other, from village to village and to state to state and all that, there's no way we can bring about um, a conducive environment for the farmers to be able to till uh, uh, the soil. And then for people to be able to move goods and services from the different parts of the country to the other, and then be able to crash the prices of these skyrocketing items all over the place. Because we find out, people if you have a million bags of rice in Lagos today, and the transporters are afraid of taking it to Kano, or taking it to Zaria, or taking it to Medjugorje and whatever. And then you leave it, uh, you sell it only in the legal state and all that. Scarcity will save us there. In places like Medjugorje, in places like Kano, in places like Yola, and whatever. So it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, a funny situation at all. We, there's a fire on the mountain. And uh, all the people in government, and all the security chiefs and whatever, must just help us to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very disturbing because we, we even have seen, like in the Daily Trust now, we've seen a report saying rising, rising production cost, bakers begin nationwide strike February 27. So everybody's mm -hmm. beginning a strike uh, some, somehow. Uh, there, there are protests here and there, pockets of protests, and the, uh, the ruling party is saying that whoever is making noise about the cost of living is in opposition or doing the bidding of opposition. And I don't know how that is supposed to be a response to what is happening in this country right now. Well, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, even we, we saw a, a video that uh, I don't know what I will say went viral, but we've, we've seen a video in the past few days where a governor in the north is, is giving directives that there should be no more selling of food in bulk to other states. The food should remain within the state, and that's the directive that he gave. So if every state is beginning to say this, 
uh, you go to Cross River or Ebonyi State and they say their rice can never go, go out of Cross River or Ebonyi. You go to Benway, Benway says their yams and their rice cannot go out of Benway and everybody's hoarding their own food, then I don't know how it's going to be. We're going to be like coconuts that are in the same bunch, but they do not share their water. That's how it's going to be in Nigeria, and I don't know where that will take us. It's, it's really worrisome for me. Really, really. That wasn't the situation, my brother. It wasn't the situation. Uh, prices are sometimes better controlled by having free flow of goods and services in the different communities, in the different uh, towns, villages, and then among the respective states of, of the federation. What the governor of that state, I think he was in Niger State, his proposal is not going to work. It will only lead to smuggling and then people moving these goods and services uh, from different parts of the country to the other, basically at night. But you and see how desperate, it shows how desperate we have reached. It, it shows the... the cost of, uh, yeah. of finance, selling those uh, goods and services. So let's ensure that uh, people are able to move goods and services freely from one part of the country to the other. Uh, so that the prices can really uh, come down. If a man in Meduguri is hungry, it has a corollary effect on the person who is in uh, Lagos. Mm. If the person in Lagos is hungry, the person in Sokoto will not feel uh, comfortable with us. Whatever happens to the people in Lagos, we one way or another have corollary effect on the people in Sokoto and the different parts of the country and other. We must have a holistic uh, view of some of these things. Any myopic perfection, any myopic solution, so some of these things will further aggravate the situation and create even worse animosity among the Nigerian uh, uh, people. So, and then uh, with regard to government, who are saying that uh, certain politicians are behind these things, uh, uh, the scarcity is artificial, that it is a certain person that are trying to use these food issues as a political uh, tool. I totally disagree with those who have, um, who have that... Uh, uh, a belief. Uh, you remember, there was a time I won't mention his name, there's this billionaire, a uh, wife of uh, one of the children of billionaire from, um, I think, Borono State. Even before the president's cast, they cried out. The woman lives in Abuja. And she was saying that um, the basket of tomato that they used to buy for 5,000 naira mm. now cost about 50,000 naira in, uh, in the market. That is from two years ago. That this woman raised this alarm, my mother, that the tax rate of tomato has gone to 50,000 naira. You could imagine what it is today. So, if that has been happening some two years ago, when uh, the issue was not about politics and all that, why would anybody now be saying that uh, it is a certain position that are trying to find the ember of the crisis with regard to this food scarcity? Uh, recently, too, uh, the enemy of Kano was uh, speaking to the first lady and asking her to carry certain messages to the husband as regarding the shoe is painting the average in a general person. The enemy of Kano is not a politician. But if the enemy of Kano is saying this, it must be because the citizens of the people, mm. the people whom he, he presides over, have been coming to him to tell him the difficulty that they are going through. I also remember that the enemy also feed certain people, a large array of people within the farmer that the enemy has to feed. So if the enemy has been feeding these people with 10,000 naira from uh, six months ago, and it now cost him about uh, 2,000 naira to feed these people, nobody needs to tell the enemy that there is a problem with regard to food uh, scarcity in the country. So rather than uh, begin to say this is a political issue, we should learn as individuals, whether it be PPP, APC, Labour and, uh, and uh, APC and whatever, a team of the petrol, and find solutions to this uh, food scarcity because when there is uh, active scarcity and all that, if you not differentiate who is uh, who is uh, APC, who is PDP, who is Labour, and who is uh, Muslim, who is Christian, and who is an atheist, it's a serious matter and we, that we should all uh, begin to tackle together. Yeah, well, uh, the ruling party is is saying, okay, PDP and other oppositions, if you have anything, come and tell. Uh, the president so that he can change the policies uh, don't just stay there and talk and then they will say in the same breath that uh, the policies that uh, uh, we are suffering now the, the reason we are suffering is a result of the poor policies of the past administration which was also APC and they had the solution maybe and they didn't tell him until now that they are crying that okay it is the 
uh, the previous administration of the same party that formulated very, very poor uh, policies. Anyway, we have now heard something that was we heard in Ondo State uh, before the, the late um, Akere Dulu, uh, that uh, governor's signature was forged. Now we have evidence, oh, not evidence, a witness who in no less a personality than the former uh, uh, secretary to the Federation, who is saying that the former CBN governor forged the, uh, the, the signature of the president to collect the six point something billion uh, dollars to give foreign observers, or allegedly give foreign observers. Buhari's signature forged to withdraw $6.2 million uh, from CBN. Ex-SGF governor is saying that. That's on the punch. And uh, also on the Daily Trust, Buhari didn't approve $6.2 million for election observers. His signature was forged. Uh, that is according to the ex-FGF. What do you say? Well, uh, to the extent that that case is in court, I think Mr. Mitchell has been uh, tried uh, for some of these uh, the cases and another. We have to be careful. We cannot uh, make too much comment on it so that we don't fall uh, so to this. But uh, for the signature of a very important people or political office or that opposition, it's not new in our country. It's uh, always uh, been there. Uh, even people are not in CPN. Uh, first time, Yahoo, uh, boys, and whatever. Most time, for your signature of uh, very, very important person. And that they try to use them to cash, uh, uh, to go and take money out of the fault of the federal government, out of the fault of the state government, out of the fault of the local government. And just about this week, or was it last week, uh, somewhere in the South South, there was a report in the paper that the phone of, um, of uh, one of the governors had been hacked into and that everything that the governor says are not certain persons have been manipulating and, uh, and they're using it uh, to, 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 to give orders to certain persons. I also remember that when Mr. Ambody was governor of the major state and other, there was also that issue of his phone being hacked into and somebody giving directives, I think, to the accountant general. Uh, of legal things uh, to do certain things. Thank God that was uh, quickly intercepted and then the necessary action was taken. Also, you remember it was uh, sometimes in the past, in which our reporter reported that one of the former, the man is to be late now, the driver of a uh, uh, former president, Mohammed Bouhari, mm. had at one time put the signature to take money out of certain places and what happened. So, all these things are not new. But the truth of the matter is, uh, it will be shocking to me uh, if it is uh, proven at the end of the day that the signature of Mr. President was actually forced at the Central Bank of Nigeria to take money out of the city. Because the people in the city don't need to forge the signature for Mr. President to be able to move money uh, from the CPN and give to certain, uh, or take to certain uh, places. And, uh, they don't need it. And the signature of the Central Bank of Law itself is there. Uh, a sufficient authority to allow certain release of certain uh, uh, money. Uh, all they need to do is for memos to be uh, done by certain things. The signature on the memo may be forged, and uh, no doubt about that. But the signature that will move the money from one place to the other, uh, from the fault of the CPN, I don't think um, uh, the CPN people require to do that in terms of uh, uh, forging a check or something and to move at this moment. So let us be very, very careful with regards uh, to this matter because of the fact that the case is in court and then because of the fact that uh, we, haven't, we don't have in our hands sufficient evidence to be able to make an informed uh, decision in opinion with regards to this uh, issue because uh, sometimes too, people in government engage in a lot of propaganda uh, when things are not going the way we should go. Propaganda against their predecessors and propaganda against their political opponents and propaganda even against the people they are supposed to be presiding over. Look at what we read this morning. The fact that people in government are saying the opposition politicians that behind the protests they are taking place from states with regards to food scarcity. When you and I do know, that actually is not the truth. Mm. Okay. 
Well, um, now this other one, I don't know if it should be funny or it should be saddening. IMF confirms return of petrol subsidy under Tinubu. That's also on Daily Trust newspaper. Yeah, that has been in the news. I won't be surprised, even though they, even Nigerian newspapers have reported that in the past, which the government has neither denied or owned up to. But why would not be surprised that the subsidy regime is back? Why would it not be back? The message is very, very simple. Most of the petrol products that we consume in this country is imported from abroad. And then you, if they are not, they are done not denominated, zero denominated, pan carrying denominated, and, and then the cost of the naira is falling, and then the dollars, the euros, and all that are rising. The differential will have to be provided for by the federal government when they are going to buy these things in the international market. So it's elementary logic that if your own value of the naira is falling, and the, the value of the dollar and pan carrying, at least you trade in the international market is uh, is rising. We have no alternative other than to either subsidize the petroleum product that we import or to ensure that the value of your the naira goes up vis a vis uh, the dollar. For pan study, it's elementary logic. Uh, if you don't uh, pay subsidy, then the value of the petroleum product, the pumping price of diesel, of um, petrol, of uh, kerosene, and other, will not have remained what it is today. Because if they imported this on five months ago, at one, I mean, at uh, 500 uh, per, nine, uh, per liter. And then they are importing at 700 or 800. And then they are still selling it to us at the 600 or 500, 600 and what happened. How are they doing it? Other than they are going to be taking subsidy from the federal government. So the IMF is merely telling us the obvious, which the Nigerian newspaper have reported uh, before now. Uh, I don't see uh, the way and manner the federal government can stop. Uh, uh, subsidizing the petroleum product, as long as the value of the naira is going down, as long as we continue, or we are dependent on importing this petroleum product uh, from uh, uh, from abroad. If they catch, uh, is it 22 or what today? I want to say, situation that we find now, or could it even be said that there is fire on the mountain? <laughs> okay, well, the subsidy we knew uh, has been uh, stopped. The subsidy we don't know uh, is continuing and the people of Nigeria are not feeling the impact the way they should feel the impact. But whatever that is, why ever that is a, a, a secret that should be kept, I do not even understand. If you're spending money on us, we should know that you're spending money on us and we'll be applauding you. I don't know why they're keeping it as a secret. Unfortunately, we have to wrap it up at this point, Mr. Kolaole. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of our program this morning. Thanks for having me, my brother. Okay. You have a lovely day. Happy Valentine's to you. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State, on the paper review that we call Off the Press. We're going to take a short break now and return in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>